Hi, I'm Eric, and this is Listen to Sleep. You guys, thanks so much for recommending the podcast to your friends last week. I really appreciate it. I definitely noticed a little bump in new listeners, and uh, you guys are great. If you have some time this week, and it's not too much to ask, if you could go to wherever you listen and leave a review of the podcast, that also helps people find it. And it seems like it's helping a lot of people. I'm really excited. Um, makes me super happy every time I hear that you guys are getting better sleep or falling asleep faster. So thanks for all of it. I appreciate everything you do. This week, we have an Irish fairy tale from Edmund Dulac's fairy book, Fairy Tales of the Allied Nations. This one is called The Queen of the Many-Colored Bedchamber. It's a long one, so I'm going to split it up into two parts. Part one will be this week, part two next week. The Queen of the Many-Colored Bedchamber One day in the long ago, the sun shone down upon a green wood whose mightiest trees have since rotted at the bottom of the ocean, where the best masts find a grave. While the sunlight slept on the bosom of the foliage, a horseman galloped in the shade beneath. The great chief Finn, son of Comhale, was looking for his knights, whom he had outstripped in the hunt. He reined in his steed in a broad glade and blew his bugle loud and clear. Beside the echoes repeated among the hillsides, there was no answering call. He rode on, pausing now and again to blow another and another bugle blast, but always with the same result. At length, the wood grew more scattered, and presently he came out upon a stretch of plain where the grass was so green that it looked like emerald. And beyond it in the distance, at the end of the sloping plain, he could see the seashore and the ocean rising like a wall of sapphire up to the farthest horizon. Down by the shore, he could see figures moving, and thinking that his knights had found their way thither, he rode like the wind down the long, gentle slope towards them. As he drew nearer and nearer, he saw that there were twelve of them, and they were playing at ball. By the mighty strokes they gave with the common, he guessed that these were the twelve sons of Bor Skulog, for none but them could drive the ball so high and far. Tremendous were their strokes, and when they ran after the ball, they outstripped the wind. As Finn drew rein and dismounted, they stopped their play, and drawing near, welcomed him loudly as the helper of the weak and the protector of the green island against the white-faced stranger. When he had returned their greeting, they invited him to join them in their game, if such an amusement was agreeable to him. Finn, son of Comel, said one, here, take my Coman and wipe away the vanity and conceit of all comers, for we are practicing for a great contest. Finn took the Coman and looked at it, holding it up between his finger and thumb. I doubt if I could do much good with this plaything, said Finn. It would break at first blow if I were to strike at all hard. Never let that stand in the way, returned the other. Wait. He then searched upon the ground among the blades of grass, and at length found a nettle, which he pulled up by the roots. Having breathed a charm over it, he passed it three times from one hand to the other, and lo, it was changed into a mighty coman, fit for the hand of Finn, son of Kumail. Then they were amazed at his terrific blows. The ball, struck by Finn, 
soared almost out of sight in the sky and fell to earth far off. But each time, the fleet-footed sons of Bor Skulag retrieved it. At last, Finn bared his arm to the shoulder and with a final blow sent the ball out of sight. None saw it go, none saw it fall. They all stood and looked at each other. My hand on it, said the eldest son of Bor, advancing to Finn. I live to admit that I never saw the game played till today. As they were speaking, a voice hailed them, and turning seawards, they saw a small boat approaching. As soon as it touched the beach, a man sprang ashore and hastened towards them. Hail, Finn, son of Kumail, he cried. You are known to me, though not I to you. My lady, the Queen Skiana Briaka, lays a knight's task upon you. Hasten forthwith and have speech with her on her island. The hand of Flat Ear the Witch is upon her, and her chiefs have advised her to summon you to her aid. I know it, replied Finn. The salmon of wisdom, which comes up from the sea, breeds knowledge in my brain. I know what is passing in all the islands but I fear that my efforts against witchcraft would be unavailing. Nevertheless, I will try. I will choose from the twelve sons of Bor Skulag three that I need, and together we will follow you to the island. But, noble chief, you have no boat here, and mine will hold only one other beside myself. Let not that trouble you, replied Finn. I will provide a boat for us four, and we will follow you. With this, he selected from the twelve sons the three that he needed. They were Kluas, Grunna, and Bakunak. Then he plucked two twigs of a witch hazel that grew nearby, and they all proceeded to the beach. There he held the two twigs out over the water, and in a moment the one became a boat and the other a mast with sail set. He sprang in and the three followed, and presently they were speeding over the sea, setting their course by that of the stranger in his boat. They sailed for many hours before they came to the island of the Queen of the Many-Colored Bedchamber. There they passed between high rocks and entered a quiet harbor, where they moored their boat to a stout pillar and set a seal upon a fastening, forbidding any but themselves to loose it for the space of one year, for they knew not how long their quest would last. Then they went up into the palace of the queen. They were gladly welcomed and treated with the most generous hospitality. When they had eaten and drank, the queen led them into a vast bedchamber, decorated in the form and manner of the rainbow. Over the ceiling were the seven colors in their natural order. Round the walls they ranged themselves in the same fashion and even the carpet itself was formed of seven hues to correspond. If the rainbow itself had been caught and tied up in a room, the effect could not have been more remarkable. It was, indeed, a many-colored bedchamber. Taking Finn by the hand, the queen led them all into a corner of the bedchamber, where she pointed to a little cot in which a child lay sleeping. I had three children, she said as she stood at the head of the cot while Finn and the others gathered round. When the eldest was a year old, it was carried off by that wicked witch, Flat Ear. The next year, when the second one was twelve months old, it suffered the same fate. And now, my youngest here, 
who is twelve months old today, has fallen sick, and I fear to lose him in the same manner. This very night, the witch will surely come and snatch my child away, unless you can prevent her. Take comfort, fair queen, said Finn. We will do our best. If you will leave this chamber to us, we will watch over your child and see that it comes to no harm. And if it be possible to capture the witch, depend upon it, we shall do so. Too long has she worked her wickedness upon these lands. The queen thanked him and withdrew. Soon the sun was set, and as the child slept on and the shadows gathered, Finn and the three brothers set their watch in the many-colored bedchamber. Presently, servants came in and set wine before them, honeymead and Danish beer and metheglin and sweet cakes. And while they regaled themselves, the servants brought chessmen and a board, and Gruna and Bakunak played chess while Finn and Kluas watched by the bedside. Hours passed while the two chess players were absorbed in their game, and the other two kept watch and ward. Then, towards midnight, while Finn was alert and wakeful, he saw Kluas sink his chin on his breast, overcome by an unnatural sleep. Thrice Kluas strove to rouse himself, but thrice he sank into a deeper sleep. Wake up, Kluas, cried Gruna, as Bakunak was considering his next move. Wake up, we have a pledge to keep. Kluas roused himself. Yes, yes, he said, we have a pledge to keep. And then his chin sank gradually on his breast again, and he was once more a victim to the same unnatural sleep. Let him alone, said Finn. I will watch. And the two brothers went on with their game of chess. Good night.